Hi crafters, Amy here, and today I'm going to show you how I make my thin, more shippable shakers. I'm going to use a couple dies here that I've had for a really long time, and I'm going to be honest, haven't really used. So I thought this design would work really well for a shaker, and I wanted to use up some of my panels in my card box here that have been just sitting there waiting to be turned into cards. I have some window plastic and some fun foam that has adhesive on the back. So I have some blingage here from Doodles Paper Playground, and here are a couple photos of the finished cards. I was able to use some items that I had pre-prepared and ready to go, um, some beautiful stenciled backgrounds and those dies that have been neglected in my crafty stash. So if you're like me, you probably have a bunch of different panels lying around um, just waiting to grow up and turn into a card someday. <laughs> so I have a ton of these. Um, sometimes I just feel like trying a new technique or playing with certain items or maybe something doesn't go um, exactly as planned, but that's why I have so many of these panels. But it lends itself well to my batching mentality where I can kind of sit back and create a bunch of cards without having to do every single step. So as you'll see here, I do end up picking a couple stenciled panels. One of them um, is stenciled and dry embossed with another stencil. Um, and then the other one I think is probably maybe from a gel plate, I'm not sure. But I used the Scribble Rose and the Feathery Leaves from A Colorful Life Designs. And actually, if you can see the texture on the darker one, that, that is actually also another stencil called Corners also from A Colorful Life Designs, and I was able to put some subtle um, dry embossing texture on that panel. So these are similar in color. I thought they would kind of um, work well together for the purpose of this video, but basically to start, I'm just going to lay um, the one die down with the details, so not the wide open one. I'm going to lay the detailed one, which is kind of like an outline, um, where I want it on the front of these panels. Now it is going to cut the full opening, but it will also cut the pretty detailed outline part, which I will use as well, and you'll see how I do this. So I'm going to run them through off screen through my die cutting machine. I have them held down with my favorite mint tape from scrapbook.com. And so you, you can see now I have the openings that um, is ultimately going to be for the shaker window. Now I'm going to pop out all these little pieces parts and here's where the beautiful detailed outline portion of the flower is going to come into play. But I'm just going to set this stuff aside and then um, basically attach the uh, plastic portion to the windows. But first I have some pieces of adhesive back foam. I ended up just going with white because I didn't have um, a color that matched really well. But I'm lining it up. It's cut down slightly smaller than A2 size because um, if you've used this stuff before, you know it kind of squishes down a little bit when you run it through the die cutting machine. And I didn't want it to come out the side um, and be wider than the panel itself. So I just use a pencil just to kind of be able to allow myself to line it up. So you can see I'm lining it up on the back with an even margin and then using the pencil just to kind of lightly outline it in a couple of spots so that I can line up the die exactly as it will be um, to line up with the front panel. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm not probably explaining it very well, but basically I'm creating the opening in the foam um, and that's going to ultimately be the well where the little shaker bits go. So on this one I realized I cut it out with the detailed portion and on the other one I realized I cut it out with the outline portion. But either way it doesn't matter, it's the same shape and ended up getting the job done. Um, so ultimately you just need the open hole to match the same hole on the front panel. So this allows you to kind of keep your little shaker bits only in the opening that matches um, your decorative opening on the front of the card. And that means they won't kind of be shaking all around, you know, where you can't see it on the card. So here I'm outlining the opening on the back of the panel with some liquid glue, and then I'm going to lay down some acetate. Now this is embossable acetate, but as you can see, I'm not doing any embossing on it. I'm just using it as a regular, you know, shaker window. So if you have any packaging lying around, it's a great way to upcycle that. Um, you know, you might have it in your trash, but basically it's just a very thin plastic and it works great for a shaker window. So I got some oozage here, of course, because, you know, 
it's liquid glue and it's my nemesis but uh, here I'm laying down some score tape on the back of this panel um, this is ultimately just how it's going to attach to the foam so I'm kind of applying it liberally here and now you can see you can nestle the decorative part of the flower back into the design now I don't want to mess with liquid glue for this because I know it's going to be hot mess express so here I'm using my artist tack these are micro dots so it's a ton of little tiny dots you basically just put the little fiddly die cut down on it and kind of burnish it and then it will pick up the little glue dots and then you don't have liquid glue oozage so this is my best friend when it comes to little delicate dyes and that allows it to attach to the acetate um, so you have the pretty design but it's kind of floating because it's right on that clear acetate so once I get that kind of fit in there I'm kind of <laughs> struggling a little bit I should have just looked at the color of the design that made it a lot easier so now these panels are ready to go so just making sure they line up real quick with my um, card bases make sure they're the right size and now I'm just removing the backer from the adhesive back foam and putting it down directly on the card base so now you can see there's a little tiny well and this is what makes it thinner than most shaker cards so typically um, a lot of the ways that people will do shakers is by using foam tape or even sometimes doubled up foam tape which works fine it gets the job done but it does tend to make it bulkier and makes it thicker so it's likely going to require additional postage so um, in the US you get one ounce and I think it can be up to a quarter inch thick before you're gonna to have to start factoring in additional postage so this you can see is not very thick at all and because it's not very thick I'm also not going too crazy with um, the blingage on the inside which means it's not going to be super heavy so this gives you the benefit of making it more shippable because it's lower profile it isn't going to weigh as much and then also the additional benefit that I personally like of this is it's got even coverage on the side um, it always bothered me when I made shakers and you could see where the foam tape would end and begin I never really liked that so I like the uniformity of this sort of design on the side of the card because then you don't really see those you know openings where you start and stop the foam tape so that's just a per personal preference if it doesn't bother you then no biggie but that's just something that I like about shakers like this and then also you can make it fun and do like a colored fun foam as well and then you have that little additional pop of color on the inside of the opening and on the side of the card so um, this is just another way to do the same thing it's kind of you know more than one way to skin a cat so to speak I hate that term it's terrible but you get the idea there's there's more than one way to make a shaker and this is the way that I like to do it when it's um, you know kind of using the foam now here I'm kind of looking through my sentiment book here I have these sentiment strips from LDRS creative and I also have this additional newish uh, shadow layer where you can kind of put that as an additional backer to help your um, label or your sentiment strip really pop off your design so I decided to make one in Spanish um, I have these I think these are all to new label stamps and then the other one I think might be mama elephant but like I said I will link all the available products in the video description box below I'm just attaching one on the inside of the card and one on the front um, for both cards and other than that it's a, it's a pretty simple design so it's kind of a, a way to just another way to make a shaker um, and make it a little bit more low profile a little bit less heavy and bulky so it's ultimately easier to ship but again if you're hand delivering it then I guess it doesn't really matter anyway but I just like to give you guys some other options to use up your crafty goodies and if you have recently shopped um, Doodles Paper Playground in their store closing sale, then you probably have a ton of these uh, little blingage sets anyway, like I do. So um, now I'm just adding a couple little black pieces on the front. I wanted to tie in um, the black with the label strips. I felt like it needed a little bit more continuity. So this is another one of the blends um, from Doodles and it helps me kind of tie in that theme. So that's going to finish these cards. You can see I've got the sentiment on the front and on the inside and some little blingage to match and a nice little shaker component inside. You can see they move around fine, um, but they're not 
super thick so you can see from the side here um, they really squish down and they're basically only the the height of you know one layer of thin fun foam so hope you enjoyed this if you did please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing i really appreciate you spending time with me today and i'll check you next time bye